Hello, I'm Sap Alien and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Two months ago I posted two videos, how to use the behind the net strategy and how to use the overload strategies heading into NHL 23. Well now NHL 23 is here and I'm here to drop some new content. This will be my first of four long form videos uh, this month walking through the basics of NHL 23. Also, I'll be posting videos on how to score, how to play defense, and what are the X factors you should be investing in for your hockey ultimate team. During this video, I'll be walking through the basics of shooting and the four shots, snapshots, wrist shots, slap shots, and backhanders. I'll also be focusing on passing and how you can use passing to open up some pretty nice offensive plays. I'll be focusing on in-zone defense and how you can use your defender to angle off uh, incoming players and I'll also be focusing on the breakouts and how a solid breakout can lead to some awesome offensive plays as well so without further ado let's jump right into this and the first thing we're gonna kick off with is shooting so let's go to kick off shooting we're gonna talk about snapshots the controls for such are flick up on the right stick use the left stick to aim the pros of a snapshot are that it is quick and efficient and it is needed for quick plays. Sometimes you don't have all the time in the world to wind up for a slap shot or use a wrist shot. The negatives are it is the least accurate and least powerful forehand shot. Wrist shots will provide more power and more accuracy. Snapshots are used for quick situations. Snapshots should only be used in situations where a wrist shot is not possible. So for example, if you have all the time in the world to wind up for a wrist shot, that's going to give you a better chance of beating the goalie straight up than a snapshot. A snapshot is used for situations when you're in tight or when you need to quickly get off a shot before a goalie can regain their positioning. Snapshots can be incredibly versatile. They don't require a lot of time to set up and they can be done at the drop of a hat. However, a lot of the times a snapshot is not quick enough and not accurate enough to beat a goalie straight up. So, when you can, use a wrist shot. Now let's talk about wrist shots. The controls for a wrist shot are, hold it on the forehand, roll up on the right stick, and use the left stick to aim. The pros of a wrist shot are, it is the most effective and accurate forehand shot, and is the most used forehand shot. The negatives are, that holding the right stick causes a loss of speed when you are skating, and it has a slower release time than the snapshot. If you are in desperate need of getting a shot off, Go with the snapshot. If you have time to rip it past the goalie, use the wrist shot. You are going to use wrist shots more than any other shot in this game if you want to get to a level where you are a Div 1 or a Div 2 player. Wrist shots provide the most accurate shot that you can have, and it can be used to beat a goalie um, whether it's 5 feet away or 45 feet away. A well-placed wrist shot will absolutely be any goalie straight up and if there's any traffic in front you can also use it to create a rebound. The longer you hold your right stick out on the forehand the more accurate and powerful shots seem to be. You don't want to hold it for about you know a quarter of a second and then try. You might as well take a snapshot at that point. But if you can hold it and you have time use that wrist shot. There is a risk that you'll get poked or bumped off the puck but if you have all the space in the world feel free to just just pull back on that right stick and just let a shot go because a lot of goalies in this game will not be able to stop a wrist shot straight up as we can see here Makar just circles he goes backhand forehand and just wrists it past the goalie it's going to provide you the most accurate experience and it's probably the most effective shot in the game there's just nothing that a wrist shot can't do let's talk about backhanders the controls for the backhander you hold the puck on the backhand roll up on the right stick the pros are it is often left undefended. Most players are more worried about a forehand shot getting off. It is tricky to control for goalies. Goalies don't expect backhanders. It can create chaos with a rebound or a deflection as well. Very effective on breakaways as well this year. NHL 23 seems to be the year of the backhand on the breakaway. And it can be snapped like a snapshot, curled like a wrist shot. The negatives, it is not as accurate or as powerful as a snap or a wrist shot. What you'll notice in these clips that I have of backhanders is that they are primarily used up close. Either up close or when there is no one around and my forehand is taken away. I would say I haven't scored a backhand goal this year that has been further away than 10 feet. And that's honestly how it should be. These backhand shots should be used when you are close in on the goalie, whether it's with a cut or on a breakaway. 
And it is great because when, when you shift to the forehand, the goalie's automatically going to assume, okay, he's going to shoot this puck. And then you just transfer to the backhand, you get around the goalie, and you roof it. Backhands can also be used in the slot this year. I've seen people without beauty backhand able to roof backhanders, but it is not as reliable as a snapshot or a wrist shot. So if you're using a backhander from the slot expecting it to be some OP play, it really is not. Stick to using them on breakaways or on cut plays when you're just learning this game. Now finally, we'll finish off the shooting category with the slap shot. The controls for the slap shot are you pull back on the right stick, you flick it back up, and you aim with the left stick. The pros are it is the most powerful shot by far, and it is the best way to beat goalies with no screen from a distance. It is also used for one-timers. The negatives are it is the longest shot to take, easily defended, and it is not as accurate as a wrist shot. I only have a few clips for this because I don't use slap shots all that often, to be honest. I mean, we'll see here Brent Burns walking the line. He'll eventually be able to curl around Brossler over here, and he'll just take a slap shot and wire it top right. There's not many instances where a slap shot's going to beat a wrist shot, unless you're using a point man or on a one-timer like here with, with uh, Dylan Larkin. Just not many chances to use slap shots where other shots would be more effective. Now we'll talk about passing. To pass, you use the right trigger or R2, depending on your console. You can also use the right stick while passing to create a more powerful and accurate pass. And to saucer pass, you use the right bumper R1 instead. Good passing is the foundation for all offense. It is the easiest way to cover large distances. The puck doesn't get tired, your players do. You can use misdirection to create confusions for the defense. Saucer passes are hard to defend, but are also hard to master. And if you pass too much, it can create dangerous turnovers. But passing is a necessity. You have to learn how to be good at passing if you're going to want to be good at this game because you can use it to draw out AI and human-controlled players to get easy chances right on the doorstep. You can see multiple chances here where it takes one, two, or maybe even three passes and I get a solid chance right at the goal mouth or at least within 10 feet. You're going to need to learn how to be good at passing in order to get prime A-plus scoring chances. And you can use the saucer or the basic pass. Just learn how to do it. Now this is the bread and butter of my gameplay, in zone defense. Now your objectives when playing defense in your own zone are to use your human controlled defender to angle off an attacker to the outside. You don't want them getting to the slot. Clog the middle by switching players in order to prevent shots from the slot. Use pokes, hitting, and stick lifts to prevent slot penetration. Player switch using by using the right trigger and flicking the right stick at the same time to keep yourself in ideal positional formations. Look at the chart below to see some of that. So now here's my example of in zone defense. Here I'm using Jonathan Huberdeau defending on the penalty kill. I'm trying to keep my opponent to the outside while also recognizing the men that my opponent has in the slot trying to prevent any one timer opportunities. I angle him off and as soon as he gets to the slot, I poke check and when the puck goes to the boards, I stick chop it away. That is prime in zone defense. Lastly, I want to talk about the breakout. Your objective during the breakout is to beat the first four checker, to recognize you and your opponent's AI's positioning, and make a solid pass using a basic or saucer pass, which you aim with the left stick. Or you can skate the puck out yourself, which is known as a controlled exit, and also recognize that you use the boards for bank passes, and that an effective breakout is the most important skill needed for an effective rush offense. As we see here, John Klingberg picks up the puck from Bishop, and I'm, I'm immediately looking for an outlet pass, and I recognize that my AI, Alan McCauley, has left the screen, the visible screen, and I make a saucer pass up there knowing that he is at the blue line. One quick pass sets up 20 seconds of in-zone time, which leads to a goal. This was a one-pass breakout where I was able to recognize my AI's positioning, make a solid direct pass, and then work in the offensive zone and score an effective goal. Here's an example of a controlled exit, and this is going to be the finale of the breakouts. Kale McCarr doing it all by himself, going through every single person on the team, forehand, backhand, in the back of the net, and that, my friends, is how you have an effective breakout. And those are just a few of some of the basic skills that you will need to learn in NHL 23 in order to master the game. Each of these are important in their own little ways, and I'm going to touch on more of them in depth in future videos. Remember, this is only the first of four videos this month. Again, this one being the basics of NHL 23. The second one will be 
how to score in NHL 23, where I'll touch more on the breakout and the passing aspect. Video 3 will be how to play defense in NHL 23, which will focus more on the in-zone defense as well as breakouts, as breaking out the puck is very important for defense. And then the final video will be how to allocate your X-Factor points for your Hockey Ultimate Team. We only have 40 AP, so we need to distribute them effectively. So again, thank you for watching this video, and I hope I was able to teach you something. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends, and I just want to thank everybody for watching this video. Bye-bye.